Boom. Yeah, Colt yeah. Cabana. Boom, boom. Colt Cabana. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, guys. Uh, today I'm going to be doing some speed painting of some WizKids miniatures, most notably the Umber Hulk, the creature from the Underdark. Ramen facts. Let him go. Uh. Tell you the non-sing, whatever it is, the uh, I forget the name of the actual brand. But uh, yeah, you're missing out if you're not eating the super hot ramen. That stuff's amazing. All right. Uh, let me know if any of the audio stuff is messed up or anything. I'm trying to get my setup correct. Uh, I got a tiny little bitty uh, tripod on my desk, which is oh so nice. Gonna be using some Terran khaki. Uh, first off, to do the base coat on the Umber Hulk again, we're gonna be speed painting, which means uh, this just has to look table ready. This is not gonna win any competitions at all. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Karen tacky. I'm gonna add a little bit of the uh, pale saffron, and I'm gonna add about. You know, a good probably seven drops of that. Use my paintbrush. Going to add a little bit of extra water into that mix. Just like a couple drops, like not a huge amount. Just going to mix that up so we get a nice kind of tannish, kind of yellowish, disgusting uh, looking uh, stuff. Hey, what's up, Andrew? Yes. Oh, yeah, that looks great. That looks pretty good. Uh, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually just cover this whole thing with this color. Uh, maybe avoid some of the eyes, maybe. If I can. Uh, and the uh, antenna. Uh, I'm going to do just kind of like the basic thing. So the antenna. And then the, uh, you know, the little... Uh, the antenna. And I don't know what you would call them. I, they're not like the... It's like mandibles, probably, is the best word to describe them. Mandibles. Yeah. So I'm going to avoid the uh, mandibles if I can. If I can't, that's no big deal. Again, this is speed painting. Yes, Umber Hulks are like, uh, I've, I've wanted to use them in man ca my campaign for a while. So let me know. I believe that uh, these guys uh, in my campaign are going to escape from a traveling menagerie of the strange and unusual animals. And the person who bought them from a disreputable person doesn't know how dangerous Umber Hulks can be. I think mostly they end up in D&D campaigns uh, when, you know, there's stuff from the Underdark and you have, like, all these weird, like, uh, um, Illithid uh, masters. They like using Umber Hulks. And Umber Hulks just kind of crop up so they're quasi-natural creatures. I'm just going to just paint over. Alright, I'm going to go back to lo-fi, I think. As much as I love Japanese wrestling music. Dude, nobody got the uh, Beholder miniatures. I was psyched about the Beholder miniatures. Nobody got them. Uh, so I'm actually going to do my video without the Beholder miniatures. Uh, I've already took some footage of this guy. Uh, when I first got him out of the package, he was all kind of messed up, so I snapped him back into the place. Gonna be great stuff. Uh, 
Yeah, this guy looks good. I thought this guy was the exact same uh, sculpt as the pre-painted version, and I was super happy about the pre-painted version. The pre-painted version was actually really good. Uh, but you know, he's actually much different. Uh, I think this sculpt was easier for them to mass produce. Uh, the only thing that I don't particularly like about this guy is the fact that he's got the weird little... Um, one of his little things... It, it's going to look wonky, but I'm not going to let it bother me. Um, it, it's got a weird little thing where like his one, uh, his one antennae is actually part of the body... So, uh, it looks weird, but I'm not gonna let it throw me. Yeah, the beholders were out everywhere. Uh, literally nobody had the beholders in stock. Uh, my online order with Miniature Market, even though I ordered, uh, somewhat early, uh, yeah. Uh, I did not get any beholders, and they held up my order because of it. But I'm not complaining, because $5 for a miniature like this is a very good deal. So, I got my base coat done. Uh, I think that's a very nice, sickly yellow color. It's excellent. I'm going to put that guy aside for a second, and I'm going to move on to another miniature. Today, I'm going to take my best crack for my second miniature. Uh, I'm going to take my best crack at the... Uh, the Mad Prophet from the Magic the Gathering board game. Uh, so, I think with this guy, uh, even though I'm pretty sure it's not going to look all that great. Um, so he's got this big robe, so it's all mostly one color, it looks like. Uh, I might do his sleeves in brown and do the main robe part of him in kind of a dark red he's actually a pretty intricate miniature he's got a lot of uh, little bits and pieces if you can see him there this is the magic the gathering miniature uh the reason i have this is because shadows over instrad uh are now like five bucks so it's uh uh you know it's a pretty good deal so that's like 24 miniatures for $5. That's not bad. That's at 5 below. Yeah, I like I like the uh, modern take on the Umber Hulk. Alright. We're just going to try this out and see how this looks. And... We're going to just give this dude a quick base coat of dark dark crimson on his jacket parts here which is the vast majority of his outfit uh even though it's quick pointing i'm going to attempt to avoid uh painting his little belt area and stuff like that just trying to get the uh base coat done nice and even all right and yeah i mean this is all one thing thing so this is just a ruffle it kind of thought he might have like a thing on his belt hey it's how to dnd &D. hey guys what is up i hope your weekend is going well i had a very productive weekend so far so i'm going to attempt to uh, make sure I get some stuff done on Sunday rather than just not get anything accomplished. Uh, so yeah, this I actually already replaced the base. Uh, if you'll notice, uh, he is no longer on the big old Magic the Gathering base. He is on the uh, teeny tiny 25mm uh, uh, sort of normal medium creature base. This is just a knockoff of a uh, uh, Games Workshop base that I got cheap from china so yes this has already been rebased to a 25 millimeter base which is pretty much the equivalent of the bases that we use uh, this guy's outfits is so weird i don't want to like yeah i think i'm just gonna make this one super simple guys i'm not gonna do anything interesting here i'm going to actually just keep some of his outfit as uh leather i believe and then the rest i'm just gonna do in red 
So we're not going to do anything fancy on this guy at all. This is going to be the epitome of a quick paint miniature. And then we can always pick out little details later if we want to make his outfit a little bit more intricate and add more colors and whatnot. But, again, I just want this guy on my table. So we are not going to do anything super complex with him. It's going to base coat. I think this shoulder thing is actually some sort of armor. But I'm just going to paint it as cloth. And I'm going to leave the uh, little breastplate thing. If you're wondering why we're listening to a really weird lo-fi, it is because uh, we are listening to really weird lo-fi because uh, I got hit by like a million different uh, things last time. Uh, so basically, I had to get like copyright free lo-fi. So that's why we have this weird lo-fi going on. What is this creature? This creature is a Magic the Gathering. Uh, Magic the Gathering and it is a Mad Prophet. Now. Uh, what it is in the game, well, it could be, like, a bunch of different things. Uh, I only picked up, uh, I only picked up, uh, two of them, actually. Uh, and that actually fits my purposes perfectly. Because then I will get six werewolves and two of these guys. Uh, Mad Prophet guy, he could be pretty much anybody. Uh, you know, obviously he looks like a deranged... Uh, yelling uh, cleric of some sort. So he could be used in D&D as some sort of a zealot. Uh, perhaps a zealot. Uh, he's got kind of a technology thing. Though he doesn't really know. He doesn't really have a technology thing going. So he could be just a general zealot. Uh, you could use him in Warhammer fantasy roleplay as a uh, some sort of, uh, you know, frenzied uh, fanatic of Sigmar, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, no, in D&D, he doesn't really... He doesn't really look like any particular thing from D&D. These are all belts. Alright, so I'm I'm already wasting my time here. This is supposed to be quick paint! So we got a quick paint. Alright, uh, knock that out. Uh, let's see here. We want to do like a lightish... Uh, uh, let's see here. We got one of my choices here. Uh, I'm looking for a kind of a leatherish color. Uh, I think I'll just go with just the... I'll just go with the medium leather brown, and then we can lighten it up later if we want. Uh, again, this guy might end up looking a little bit wonky, but, you know, this is not... It's not supposed to be about perfection today. Uh, so, as you can see, I try to reset my camera up there so you can see a little bit more of what I'm actually doing here. And what I'm doing is just picking out major bits of paint and whatnot. In this, uh... Um... So let's see here. So this is actually a chain that he has uh, uh, on his little belt here. So I'm going to have to pick that out in black and then do ye old uh, easy uh, metallics on uh, that, I believe. That's what I'm going to have to do. Oh, there's actually 12 people watching. I am shocked. I am shocked that there, there's 13 people watching. This is crazy. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Again, if there's any comments or questions you have about my channel or about anything else, please let me know. Uh, so, let me see here. Um, what am I doing here? Uh, parchment. Uh, I'm going to pick out black next, I think. 
Okay, so you're talking about paint sticky drying. So, here's the thing. Uh, if your paint is not drying and is still sticky after hours of drying, and you're using acrylics, acrylics will always dry super, super fast. So if you're using acrylics, then that's an issue where you might be having a situation where your material that you're working with is not uh, is not working well with your acrylic paint. So is it a particular miniature that you're working with that you have that issue with? Because I had that issue specifically when I naively first tried to uh, spray prime uh, Reaper Bones. Uh, and Reaper Bones, unless you use specific stuff and you have good circumstances, uh, it will not work well with spray primer. It will remain sticky forever, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, no acrylics uh, by its very nature will down will will dry within like seconds. So that's why I'm, I'm an idiot because I'm using a uh, I'm using this stupid palette instead of using a proper wet palette, which you should always do uh, because acrylic paints dry like super quickly. Um, so if your paints are doing that, then there's something uh, really wonky with uh, what you're trying to paint, or if you're trying to thin your uh, paints with something weird. That might also might be a situation. Alright, so uh, the book I'm going to do with ruddy leather. It's just a darker kind of leather. Just going to pick that out. When you're speed painting like this, everybody says, make sure that you have your paints and make sure you thin your paints. You always want to thin your paints, unless you're doing what I'm doing, where you're picking out details uh, and you're speed painting and you don't care about having a professional job. In which case... You actually want to keep your paint nice and thick, so you can easily pick out all these little details with the paint. Uh, and so this is not going to look as good uh, as thinning out your paints, but yeah. Owl bears, my favorite things. I really like how Wizards, as far as I know, they haven't really done an official Why Are Owl Bears Owl Bears. I love that. All right, uh, so I want to do like maybe some. Yeah, I want to make this parchment, like, really nasty, so I'm actually going to paint it with bone, uh, mixed with a little bit of white, I think. Yeah, owlbears, I don't believe, have an actual origin. Uh, they're just kind of, uh, it's always been hinted that they've been the result of a wizard's curse. An experiment gone wrong. The ferocity of a bear. Yeah, that looks nice. So, uh, I'm being a real scrub with this. I'm not going to try to do uh, the details in this little thing with uh, any sort of blending or any sort of uh, dry brushing. I'm literally just going to hit the edges with this once it's dried with a little bit of wash, uh, which is the scrubbiest way to get stuff done. Uh, here's an odd fact. My uh, fine fellow Kringle over there, uh, originally I was trying to make an owlbear puppet, but that didn't work out. Uh, so now he's more of a winged kobold puppet. Alright. So, uh, we got our fair skin... And we got our. So, what we want to do is hit up this guy's flesh with some uh, just skin tone stuff here. Yeah, 
Yeah, I love that guy. I made him in an improv class. Uh, if anybody's having trouble with their uh, creativity when it comes to D&D games, with your creativity when it comes to pretty much any sort of project that you're working on, uh, I would suggest uh, take some improv classes. Because uh, that just helps get your mind into that correct field that it needs to be. And the puppet was a result of improv class, where you got to make your own puppet. So I actually made that puppet from scratch. He is a 100% original puppet. There is none like him in the entire world. Super proud how he came about. very important uh, if you're going to do uh, it's very good to have uh, other creative outlets if you're going to be doing uh, dungeon mastering stuff wow beyond the walls of the mystic eye games I have never heard of that that's a new one for me I will have to check that out Trying to figure out where this guy's. Alright. Base coat on this guy is almost done. Uh, one thing I forgot is to get the pages of the book. Very important. It's going to do very simple. light brown for the hair and then I'm going to just add some gray streaks in with a small brush once we've gone a little bit further that the only people that managed to get the beholder this week seem to be people that were the store managers. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Uh, but I'm very happy that we will eventually get that great model. I know I want to do some very weird stuff with that. I want to make some very strange color choices with that beholder. Uh, yes, I am. I'm still doing that video series. Uh, I'm in the middle of working on one right now. It's a scenario where uh, I need to figure out what I need to do next. Uh, there's 
a website where you can get uh, miniature packets for uh, board games. And I've forgotten the name of it, but you can get a little miniature packet uh, that has all sorts of little weird demon things. So I might think that might be my next one. Yeah. Yeah, the Nolzier uh, uh, Beholder. see our base code for our mad profit is mostly done now as you can see uh, simple simple no big things here uh, obviously we're gonna let that guy dry and we're gonna go back to our umber Hulk. so um, I think yeah all right so the idea I had with this guy is that I was gonna dry brush a bit of uh, really bright rusty red on some of the little uh, edges here and on his fingers and whatnot uh, and then I was going to smooth that out with a little bit of dwarf flesh here I'm going to use my little army painter cheapo dry brush guy here. This is going to be a... Are you talking about uh, alchemy? Well, not alchemy. Um, uh, whatever the heck the heck that is called. Not alchemy miniatures. Uh, you're talking about. Uh, shoot, now I forget. Uh, not alchemy. It's uh, there's another brand of miniatures. I forget. A oh, War of the Ring. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I ever... I don't know much about War of the Ring miniatures. Um, 
I don't know what else I want to do with this guy. Uh, so I'm dry brushing a little bit, getting a little bit of color uh, in his fingers and stuff. Uh, yeah, this is just an undercoat of yellow. Uh, as always, I'm working on it too many at once. Uh, so for the uh, mandibles here, uh, I think what I'm going to do... Hmm. I think what I'm going to do is actually try to put, uh, like, uh, non-metallic new gold and mix that with maybe, like, a deeper yellow. Try to get a weird color for the mandibles that way. Because I don't really want to do them metallic, so... Do a little bit of new gold and a little bit of the old mustard dull dull. Mix that together, like. Let's see what we can come up with with this. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now we kind of have a mustery gold that we're going to paint those with. So stand out. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. And again, guys, uh, the idea is that this is just quick painting. So we just want to look, make something that makes it look nice. Ah, nice. Very good. Uh, these are not Vallejo paints. These are mostly uh, Reaper paints, and I've got some Army War Painter stuff, and I've got some Formula P3 washes. Um, trying to figure out how to make his uh, antennae stand out. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Uh, so I don't want to be a complete scrub and not do anything interesting with this guy. Uh, so what I might do is uh, maybe try to do a little bit of uh, uh, kind of do a little bit of uh, kind of bluish gray. Yeah, I'm gonna do a very light uh, dry brush of uh, gray. I'm going to try to lighten that up with a little bit of white. Because I don't, I just want to try to peck out some of his outside shell here, make it look a little weathered before I do the, uh, before I do the old, uh, mm, yeah, see. Yeah, I don't know about that. do a little bit. Alright, so that's good. Alright, um, and uh, I like the yellow on his mandibles, but I think I'll do I think I'm gonna do the uh, um, the claws just in the traditional kind of uh, dirty Dirty bone claws, I think, would be a good one.
Hmm. And then the eyes, they just had that, so... I think I'm gonna do the eyes in just, uh... I actually think I'm just gonna do it in just the straight-up, uh... New gold metallic. Or non-metallic. Actually, I don't know if this, this is metallic. Actually, I can't tell if this is metallic or not. It's Reaper New Gold, so... It sort of looks metallic. Yeah, it's probably metallic. I'm gonna do the eyes with that. So that guy's looking pretty decent. As you can see here, um, not too bad looking. So I think I'm gonna dirty him up. I'm gonna use the classic, uh, well not classic, but the new classic, the uh, Army War Painter Quick Shade, Strong Toad, and I'm gonna give him, dirty him up like that. He's got a lot of cracks and crevices, so I think. Uh, this is an especially scrubby way to do it. Uh, I don't think it'll look too bad on this miniature. So let's just uh, do that up and get that situated. <laughs> I always like the owl bear that's like the. Uh, it's a uh, owl's body and a bear head. <laughs> and somebody bred them so they could fly. Yeah. All right, so we're doing a real messy, 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 messy uh, wash here. I don't want to keep the only part that I don't want to wash uh, is his uh, mandibles and his uh, claws fingers. The rest of it I'm just gonna hit. So if any of you were confused about what I was doing with the uh, dry brush of the uh, kind of lighter colors, hopefully now uh, that I'm washing them, you can see how that's sort of coming together a little bit. There we go. So now our now our little Umber Hulk is uh, coming together pretty nicely. Uh, we can see that the uh, this guy is pretty much meant for uh, <laughs> he's meant for washing. There's so many little crevices and stuff. He looks really good once you start washing him. So we're gonna let him dry up. As you can see, um, I think the little kind of uh, reddish pink that I did, I think that stands out really well. Uh, and I like his claws. I'm gonna highlight those. As we go along. So we're gonna put him over here and we're gonna go back to our uh, madman. Our mad prophet! 
Uh, and we're going to start uh, dry brushing little bits and pieces of this guy as well. Uh, and we're going to use my finger to lightly touch because we don't want to dry brush too much. We just want enough to hit those ends so we can see his little, uh, little book here and stuff. We don't want to overdo it at all. We want to make sure. And we're going to head up these uh, little leather bits here. And we're going to figure out what the heck we're going to do with his chain. Uh, because he does have a chain that attaches his book to him. Uh, and we're going to have to decide how much detail we want to actually waste on this dude. Alright. I can't believe I've done this. Okay, what website has like a million hour owlbears? That's what I'm wondering. I can't believe you've done this. I can't believe you've done this. What a disappointment. Who knew that a person with the nickname Knight Spain would do something so awful? It's not good at all. So what we're doing here, a little bit of uh, Reichsland flesh wash for the uh, hands and face just to get as many little details as we can out of this guy Frankly, I'm thinking I might just do these two. Keep it at a very short session. Just doing some little dry brushing to his hair, uh, trying to get his personality out a little bit more. He's coming together nicely. Our little uh, mad prophet here. Um, to limit yourself what is written in the books is to limit yourself as the DM. Uh, I agree. There's plenty of stuff in the books to allow you to come up with your uh, with new stuff. Um, however, I think for new DMs, they really should stick to the basic rules and stuff. Uh, I've seen too many games where people have introduced like game breaking uh, homebrew into the game, and it's never a fun time. You know, I think this guy just needs some straight-up metallics. That's what I think I need. Ah, uh, I'm just waiting for that to dry, dry, because I can finish this stupid guy off, because it's the biggest thing. Ah, uh, I always want to... 
speed painting stuff. Uh, there's another guy here I could do. Um, I don't know if I want to try to paint three guys tonight. Uh, but this guy actually looks pretty good. Uh, he is another Magic the Gathering miniature that I rebased on a smaller stand. Yeah, it's weird. I uh, didn't start playing D&D until I was uh, 30. So I'm I'm late to the game. Uh, I attempted to do that D&D thing once where we attempted to play. Uh, but that was a weird thing where like we found like this weird D&D uh, &D thing at a garage sale. And I bought it and some little nerd managed to talk me out of it. And so we tried to run a game. But then he took like... Then he, like, actually took it. So I never actually got to keep it. Uh, it's very annoying. Interesting stuff. The, uh, um... Yeah, the first time we played, obviously, was a messed up thing. Because it was just one of those scenarios where the guy running it didn't know how to run the game. Which is generally what happens. Uh, I think... It'd be interesting for this dude just to have the classic... I don't know. Do you think I should make his tongue red? Or if he just had a black void as a mouth, that might be interesting too. I'll try painting his tongue super red. See if that looks good. I was so frustrated because I never got a chance to be the DM for a proper game... Because it seemed like everybody else wanted a turn at trying to be the DM. And it never... Uh... But I ended up then running a lot of games. Because uh, I was a librarian and whatnot. So I was able to run a bunch of games for uh, events for the library. And then I was able to run a bunch of games for um, uh, uh, conventions and stuff. It's very cool. So what I'm doing now is just kind of looking at the uh, slapdash thing that I did before, and I'm picking out major mistakes. And this guy has quite a bit of detail on him. I'm actually shocked. Let's just take a quick look here. Wow, look at this. Like, there's actually a lot of detail. I'm really happy they got this these miniatures for so cheap. This is actually a really good deal. I think I'm just going to paint this stuff with just uh, straight up. Or maybe... I'm trying to make the decision whether I want to uh, use metallics on this. I'm going to use a little bit of metallics and I will paint over uh, if it doesn't fit well with the miniature. Painting his buttons. 
gonna paint his uh Uh, I'm starting to break my own promise here. This is drifting out of... Uh, this is drifting out of uh, quick paint territory if I keep on screwing up stuff. So, I don't want to put a ton of uh, effort into this. He has such cool... Uh, um, he has such cool eyebrows. I do want to kind of paint his eyebrows, though. So, uh, the cool thing about flagship stores, you can get stuff like this. There's a bunch of really fine-tipped brushes, um, and uh, I believe these are from, like, the uh, Gundam models. So, should I just do darker? Whoa. Whoa! I can't believe that screwed up. Wow. So that's a good thing, guys. If you screw up with acrylics, just get a little bit of water on your brush and paint your mistake away. I'm not sure what was the deal with that. Maybe the brush was screwed up or something. But it did not paint a fine line like I'd wished. Just can't seem to get his eyebrows right. That's very frustrating. Stretching the limit. All right. Frustrating.
Uh, well, Healy just looks goofy as heck now. This is craziness. Yes, this is what happens sometimes. You, you, you screw up something and it's just like, it's just all, it's all wonky. Alright. So my original idea is to try to paint some some gray hairs in them. Let's see if I can maybe get that idea to work or not. Ah, oh boy. It's just... Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is why I was when you try to speed paint something and then start worrying about little things. You miss the uh, miss the forest for the trees here, I believe. Alright. Uh, what should his pamphlet say? He has a uh, lovely pamphlet here that he's holding up. So do you have any suggestions on what that should say? I'm going to attempt to uh, write. Let's see here. Um, I'm not trying to. Alright, uh, so let me see here. While I'm. Uh, I know I've found miniatures at Goodwill. I have not found specific miniatures to D&D. I found Star Wars miniatures uh, the other day, but nothing that can be used for D&D, unfortunately. Uh, so, yes, uh, you can find miniatures. I actually found a bunch of uh, HeroScape miniatures. I don't know if this music is so too loud. Uh, HeroScape miniatures are pretty uh, good find. There we go. Alright, so I want to do a little bit of... See, I'm getting all fancy with this. This is the exact opposite of what I set out to do. So this is what happens sometimes. You try to quick paint something, and then you get obsessed, and you're like, oh boy, I just want to make it look nice. 
It's just like I should be wasting my time uh, with other miniatures that are much better detailed than this. But I cannot stop myself. I'm going to try to make this look as nice as possible, which is a dumb thing to do. See, it's just... Alright, so... I'm not gonna do eyes on this guy. I gotta know when to quit, guys. And I, I think this is gonna be about... Besides his little thing that I'm gonna do uh, for his uh, little page there. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know... I'm going to try to write something here. Um, I'm going to try to write Valor if a Tang. I think that's pretty good. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna just use my use my Warhammer Wargamer detail brush for this. If I was smart, I'd use my. Or you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to use this stupid thing again. Ah, right, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to... I don't have a good enough brush to do this, unfortunately, and I do not feel like making a one bristle brush for this.
There we go. Armor Crest is very good, actually. Uh, yes, and I've been actually, uh, in addition to thoroughly cleaning my miniatures, I've also been uh, adding uh, a step where I soak them in uh, rubbing alcohol. But that's obviously not, you know, that's not strictly necessary or anything. Something I like to just make sure everything's very, 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 very clean and dry before I prime them. And I've been using a lot of uh, brush-on primers. Uh, this miniature is actually uh, one of the last ones that I spray-primed. I mean, don't get up your hopes with Goodwill. Um, I think it really is the luck of the draw. I think I've been incredibly lucky with the stuff that i found so far at Goodwill. Uh, so, but you never know. That's the thing. Um, where'd my black paint go? I just had my paint and I can't find it. There it is. Uh, do you know the make or model of the miniature that you're trying to prime? Because uh, if it's a toy, uh, then I would try actually just the cheap uh, spray primer or a Vallejo brush-on primer. If you live near a Hobby Lobby, I believe they stock uh, Vallejo brush-on primer, which is very convenient to use in the winter. Uh, when it's too cold outside to spray. And you really should not be spraying uh, primer indoors during the winter. Oh, that's no good. <laughs> I actually really like this guy. Uh, I think that this... Uh...
Yeah, if you don't know the name of the figure, then I, uh, I, I can only suggest that you try uh, maybe Vallejo Brush on Primer from Hobby Lobby. Uh, first off, if you live in the part of the world where you can still use spray primer, uh, then you can use any cheap uh, spray uh, primer. Krylon, um, Krylon uh, multi-purpose works really good. Yeah, some people actually soak the cheap uh, toys for, like, days uh, in um, cleaner. So they don't have to worry about that. Uh, but, yes, I have to say that acetone, uh, a lot of miniatures will just be eaten away with acetone. Uh, if you put acetone on a miniature for a, a quick, I mean, but, like, that should... That should really be your last dish effort, because acetone will generally eat away at almost anything that you put it on. Uh, that's any sort of plastic based. Um, uh, yeah, it's just if it, yeah, yeah, dollar can straight Bray. Yep, uh, Big Brother's got it right. With most uh, cheaper miniatures, you would just want to go for a cheap spray primer. All right then. Boom. Um, I don't know if I want to um, do anything more with this guy. I mean, I think this is I think this is really good. I don't think the uh... yeah. I mean, I, I did, considering this miniature cost me far, far less than fifty cents. Uh, I think this is good enough. You could obviously go further from here. Uh, as you can see, I couldn't get anything written down there, so I just decided to go with the uh, Cthulhu, uh, not the Cthulhu symbol, the Lovecraft symbol, uh, just as a, a fun thing here. Uh, but frankly, I mean, I think you could obviously go further with this. You could highlight. You could blend, uh, you could definitely pick some out detail, uh, I mean, but like with a basic figure like this, I think this is a pretty advanced, uh, quick <laughs> paint thing here. So I think, uh, I think this guy looks pretty dang good, uh, and he will look really amazing on the table. Uh, I think this, this guy would be great for a, um, Warhammer, uh, fantasy game. So, uh, I mean, obviously, I could do a lot more detailed work on this guy. Uh, but again, I mean, the whole deal with this guy is that he's a very, very cheap miniature from a board game. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty good. I already did a wash on this guy. Uh, I washed a bunch of little parts. His book I washed. Uh, I did a wash on the edge of the, this little scroll here. I did a wash on his face and hands. I did a wash on the middle parts. Uh, so I think that's going to be good enough. I did a wash on his, uh, leather bits of his outfit. So I think he's good to go. I think this is a, a good example of a miniature that is a successful, um, a very successful, um, very simple wash thing here. Uh, and this guy, I think I'm going to paint his base, uh, a weird kind of purplish color, uh, and then, um, dry brush it a little bit so it can be kind of like a weird sort of uh, under dark stone maybe oh man that's it's no good Yeah, playing for young people is weird. Uh, running a game for young people is weird. It seems like half of them want to do the whole video game thing, and the other half of them want to, like, you know, just do all sort of weird stuff, so... Running games for young folks is interesting but frustrating at times.
I should have shaken this better. Ah oh, well. Like. I think Gary Gygax, uh, I've got to talk about an article in a new video, I think, where Gary Gygax was talking about the whole uh, the whole difference between the narrative and the game. And how you have, it's a balancing act between the both of them. Uh, I don't know if that question is to me or not. Do I have most of the D&D sets? I have uh, a lot of the D&D sets. I have the core books. Uh, I have the Curse of Strahd. I'm going to pick up the, uh, um, oh, the, uh, whatever the new book is. I forget, uh, I don't even know. The one with the Beholder on the cover. <laughs> the major, uh, rules compendium thing that they're, that they're coming out with. That one I'm definitely going to get. Uh, yeah, I think 5e is so great because you can run an entire game uh, with the free rules that they have online, and you will be perfectly uh, able to do so. It's very cool. Very cool. All right. The uh um Yeah, I mean I've had, I've had a lot of really good games with 5e. I've run a lot of like just one-shot dungeon crawls cuz that's what I was doing kind of as a thing for a while. I was going to a comic book shop for a while and running uh, one-shots. And I've been doing that lately, but I've just been trying to find some in-person players. Because uh, I had, like, a really good game where I just randomly... Um, if anybody knows Plaster Brain, um, I was in Plaster Brain's uh, forms when those were uh, temporarily a thing. And uh, I found a bunch of people that had never played D&D before who all uh, played a game of D&D with me. And it was really fun and awesome. Um, so, yeah. All right, so what we're going to do now. Oh, no, pale. Pale's Pale's so, uh, I gave this dude a super heavy, 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 incredibly heavy, um, coat of, um, wash. And he looks really good, but I think I might try to dry brush a little bit on top of him try to bring out uh, some more of the detail again. So this is going to be the same uh, a slightly slightly, ever so lightly sh uh, slightly lighter shade of the original coat. And I'm going to not do what I just did, which is obscure the uh, detail. I'm going to try to give a quick very light Ah, dang it. That's Shit. 
Yeah, see, I don't know if that's working out or not. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Yeah, I think for a quick paint, this guy is almost done. I really don't know. Okay, that's...
Oh, man. Why do I do this? I'm wasting all my paint today. Ah, that is a shame. Uh, are you near anywhere where you can get into the D&D uh, &D encounters? Because sometimes you can get uh, good games doing that. Uh, and if you're not near any place that has D&D &D encounters, uh, Roll20 always has games going on. Ah, see, here's the thing. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is one of the reasons why I hate using cheap paintbrushes. You can almost see it. Can you see that stupid paintbrush thing off his eye? Hate that when that happens. You lose a paintbrush. Ah, uh, you lose a little hair from the paintbrush. Ugh. I gotta get some tweezers. I'll be right back. I just get some tweezers so I can finish this up. I'll be right back. Alright, well, I believe that wraps it up. Uh, I mean, this guy turned out really nice. Uh, for the people that were sitting here uh, watching me paint this, this is the simplest of the simple. This is literally just a base coat, uh, picking out a few details, a, uh, a wash of uh, brown on the whole thing. A tiny bit of dry brushing, which I mostly abandoned. And then a little bit of dark wash in his eyes uh, to make the eyes pop out. And a little bit of highlights on the claws. Uh, and the 
And this guy looks pretty good. Uh, I've only been playing... Uh, I... Uh, it's been about five years. So, yeah. My camera here. So, yeah. I'm super happy with this dude here. Very nice. Uh, yeah. I mean, this, this guy obviously... Uh, a really nice sculpt. Uh, I there was barely any mold lines. You can you can almost still see the mold lines. Actually, I didn't do that good of a job about getting rid of the mold lines. No, uh, well, actually, I don't have enough light for this. Hold up. There we go. Uh, so yeah, uh, the mold lines you can barely see them, like barely. Uh, but I scraped them up a little bit, so they're fine. And then, of course, uh, this guy here, uh, a really good situation. Oh, man, I cannot get this thing focused. Focus. There we go. So this guy here, of course, uh, the Mad Prophet. Um, this is just from the Magic the Gathering board game. I rebased him and did a quick uh, paint job on him. He looks really nice. Uh, I like both of these miniatures. Focus. Focus. There we go. So you can see that annoying hair is still there. But that's fine. The stupid detached uh, thing. Uh, my players definitely won't notice that. Uh, this turned out really nice. I like my uh, my color choice here. Uh, I used gold and uh, tan, but it still has this lovely little greenish color here because of the washes. So uh, tan plus uh, light gold. Uh, which is, I know, not light gold, light yellow. Saffron yellow, actually. Uh, so again, this this weird kind of greenish effect uh, was because I used uh, Terran khaki, uh, pale saffron, and then when you wash that with uh, strong tone ink, you'll get a nice little uh, greenish shine on it. So yeah, it's just one of those great examples of how little colors and let me tell you the the other colors on his side uh this was actually um this was actually uh a dry brush of rusty red and a dry brush of dwarven flesh and that worked out really well i like how it pops on the sides and on the fingers uh it worked out really well and i like that i didn't go completely metallic on his uh mandibles uh, they are just like uh, a little bit of gold mixed with a little bit of yellow. And uh, yeah, and I'm going to leave his base kind of nondescript. But yeah, $5 miniature. That looks really, really nice for a $5 miniature. I'm, I'm super, super pleased with that. And again, I, I uh, you know, even cheaper than the $5 miniature was this miniature here, which I paid like less than 25 cents for because I got, uh, you know, I don't, I didn't do the math. But yeah, focus, please. Focus, please. He's not going to focus. There we go. Yeah, this guy was good. Uh, there's some major details on his books. If you look really close, these miniatures actually have some really good detail. You can see there's some damage to his book and stuff. Um, his face, I think I screwed up the priming on this one, so actually the details are a little bit more muddier than normal. But again, like this is going to be a heavy-use miniature. It's going to be a workhorse. Uh, I'm going to give this guy a heavy-duty... Uh, thing of uh matte varnish uh it's gonna be a workhouse miniature uh, so yeah i don't expect to do uh super super interesting things with this